What's going on, everybody? I'm Tom. I'm Pat. And I'm Zach. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. They say you can't choose your family. Well, you also can't choose which era of music you grew up in. This is a weekly show where we discuss our favorite bands from adolescence and how they continue to shape our lives today. Each week, we'll head back to the early 2000s and take a closer look at the cards we were dealt. So last week, Tom said that we were going to start doing... Not, is it a competition? Or is it basically... We challenged the listeners. I think, it, I think it could be a competition. I like that. Well, you have stickers and pins and stuff, right? You can send stuff to people. I am having stickers made, yes. But we do have pins. No. And we do have underwear? <laughs> no. I don't. We don't have any. <laughs> That's true. You actually don't, if you are a new time listener of the show, a lot of Tom Wardrobe talk in those first hundred episodes <laughs> covered a lot, a lot of ground. Talked about his feet a considerable amount, and that's not even incorrect to say. So, uh, no, but yeah, you had a particular favorite review so far, um, and you wanted to read it, but I forget the terms and conditions of the of the actual uh, sweepstakes we got going. Yeah, basically, if you write a review, we'll read it on the air, and basically, I mean, just in the spirit of the show, I think funnier is better, right? And not always, not <laughs> not always. I'm just saying, make it be good. Yeah, well, definitely positive in nature. Oh, of- oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. We should clarify that the preference would certainly be that uh, that you you would be in this scenario enjoying the program. So, so I'm gonna read this incredible review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever from Jim Bro Slice, with the title being "Grandma's Cookies," and it goes, "quote." I would compare this show to grandmother's perfectly baked cookies. It has just the right amount of the highest quality ingredients to satisfy any listener. A heavy mixture of both intelligence and humor are the base of this delicious program. With dashes of sarcasm and banter, it offers even the pickiest of listeners something scrumptious to enjoy. (laughs) This is the best part. The... (laughs) The relaxation segments not only center me completely, but also haunt my dreams. <laughs> a truly surreal experience. <laughs> I'll be a lifelong listener. Thanks, Jim Bro Slice. Um, yeah. But... <laughs> that was almost too nice. I don't know. I feel a little off. Uh, no, I like it. Uh, and we're going to take it back to a throwback Christmas edition of the relaxation uh, later in this episode. Is that right? Zach's going to join us for a bit, uh, and then and then we'll do... Well, we're talking about Christmas music this week because it is that time of year again, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, this is, I guess, the Christmas music episode. And before we launch into that completely, wanted to give just a couple more shout outs to some people. Um, JW and Matt have both sent us or tweeted photos of them in our new t-shirts. And it's kind of like the coolest feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> JW hashtag more tunes and I almost cried. (laughs) (laughs) Oddly emotional experience. Super cool. Yeah. And I know like Matt's always been hella supportive and it's just so cool to see them like in the shirt. And of course my first thought is like. The only reason JW probably wasn't there from an earlier point was we had been keeping it almost an active secret (laughs) for all (laughs) intents and purposes that we even did it. So uh, just cool. Cool of him to be. He sent me a few texts. About last week's episode about the Click Five, which was a lot of fun, and actually ended up being kind of funny and pretty good. I liked, I enjoyed doing it anyway. Yeah, yeah. It was, you had worked very hard to make some shirts available to to those who would even, who would even want to go that route, which is cool. Thanks for putting that work in, Tom. Yeah, man. I mean, my first thought when I started seeing pictures is like, do they like it? Is the design too big? <laughs> like, just stressed out about it. But it's cool. I mean, we've sold quite a few, and I don't know, for the most part, who they went out to. <laughs> Doesn't give that information. Well, you know, we talked a few months to do. We don't want to do a Patreon. Well, I think we're, you know, no. but yeah. it's cool that anybody would even care <laughs> enough yeah. to, like, be do anything of that nature. So I wanted to run a quick idea by you in the spirit of Christmas. Uh, yeah, sure. If I made Christmas cards... Would you be interested in being on a Christmas card? 
are we sending these? Are we going to ask listeners for their home addresses? Because that sounds like a scam waiting. Like, <laughs> all right, everybody, this has been the longest long con of all time. Please send us all your personal information. I already have mass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've really? sent him stuff in the past. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, it was, for like the first 60 episodes, it was only Matt. So uh, <laughs> the ride or die fan for sure. Uh, and why our show has veered so frequently into the Canadian space of culture, so, uh, which I am thankful for. That's yeah. probably the only thing I was thankful for this Christmas, other than several other things. But uh, yeah, should we get right into it? This is, you know, we've done Christmas episodes in the past where we just talked about when's it too early to play? You know, what are our favorite songs? This is definitely uh, in in tune, in step with the rebrand is from 2000 to 2010 uh, was it a good decade for Christmas music? And we'll take it take it from there, uh, from the very beginning where Zach joins us. He had to go to bed early for work, and we're recording the intro uh, after the fact to lead everybody into it. But it is uh, it gets weird fast. I think be the best <laughs> way. Very weird, very fast. Might even be a more accurate way. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's get into it. Was this your idea, Pat? Um, I don't know if I'm ready to make a claim like that. <laughs> So we're doing the Christmas episode a little early because for the first time in weeks, I went out into public and heard Christmas music coming through the department store stereo system. And it kind of freaked me out. And it got us talking about what was like the best era for Christmas music. Did we, as we have uh, in many other genres, did we live through the worst adaptations of these Christmas songs? And we're going to discuss some of the best and worst. Is that uh, is that what's happening here? What I did was mapped out 2000 through 2010. This is the Google, what Google came up with. Uh, so we're just going <laughs> to go year by year. And it becomes pretty clear where this decade ranks, I would say, by the third <laughs> musical act <laughs> that gets mentioned. <laughs> but let's just... I will say this, as we've... We're starting to see trends, right, as we go through the decades. One, that Adam Schlesinger writes every single song that gets released. Two, <laughs> um, that the 90s flows into the two th- early 2000s, so the first two or three years is hard to really gauge when things get weird, but it is instantly clear when that turn comes, and then there's it gets weirder yet after that. So um, <laughs> we'll start in the year 2000. If you guys have any others, feel free to chime in. Well, can I just say precursor to the year 2000 i mentioned this i think the past two years hansen released a christmas album immediately following the success of their debut album which mbop was on the album was called snowed in and it is my go-to christmas album i think only because i have so little faith in anything that's come after it so shout out to 97 zach do you before we get into this do you have a go-to uh, christmas album or artist yeah, like anything 1100 BC and before mm. is is really my top. <laughs> Some so good like, old uh, Gregorian chants. Yeah, way before he even existed, you know. Wait, <laughs> your favorite Christmas songs predate Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> a throwback. So, so Zach hates Christmas songs. <laughs> no, like... Back when it was still a pagan holiday, right? <laughs> 1929 to like 1954 is is I eat, oh, I eat that up. Good years, yeah. yeah. Good years. Um, <laughs> the Mariah Carey era of <laughs> "All I Want for Christmas Is You" is uh, I d- I don't agree with the meme that one person has their entire Christmas playlist as that song on iTunes. It's, it's, <laughs> it is a good one though. It is a heavy hitter. It might be the best. It probably is. It may is. not be, though. Ooh. Let's think about that. <laughs> Can we discuss the fact that someone made a playlist of one song on repeat rather than just pressing the loop button on their phone? That's just a basic misunderstanding of the program you they're is using. Dumb. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So Zach's about the Gregorian chants. What about you, Pat? Uh, I've, I'm going to have to agree with Archboy on this one. <laughs> Chant it up, Sinterklaas. <laughs> Keep it old school meets new school. Predating brick and mortar schools even, right? Like 
Yeah, I mean, there was there was like blood and hair mortar back then, but um, some some Krampus chants. Yeah, yeah, but like (laughs) even before then, like the BC, like post Egypt rock Christmas (laughs) ballad, (laughs) post Egypt rock, (laughs) new new wave Egyptian. Or just new waves of the Nile. Um, let's get into it. This is taking a turn. Uh, year 2000. We're in good hands. Christina Aguilera, My Kind of Christmas. She was on WTAE in Pittsburgh in 1991 singing Silent Night. This is her wheelhouse. I don't think anyone's going to come in here and say Christina's voice isn't one of the better of that decade or our era. Would you guys agree? Wait, she sang it in 1991? Yeah, as like a kid, she was a member of the Mickey Mouse Club or whatever oh, she sang. But oh, in 2000, okay. she came out with My Kind of Christmas. So to me, that's that 90s pop era. Okay. Like, we're in good hands still. 2001, Destiny's Child, Eight Days of Christmas was their album there. So things have not yet gotten weird, right? This has been a, like a totally understandable, famous pop stars with n- good voices. Beyonce, Christina Aguilera. I mean, there's nothing, nothing Can weird or bad or... Anything to really shake anything at, right? But it's about to get bad, though. It's about to get... The puddle is about to get a little bit muddier. I would say, yeah. Yeah. And that's even one of the names of the bands <laughs> in the, of the decade that we're about to explore. So, you know, it is what that is. Uh, in 2002, <laughs> here are two bands. <laughs> one of the releases was Kenny G's Wishes a Holiday <laughs> Album. That was one of the three most like recognizable names of, of the year's Christmas release. <laughs> the other is none other than Hillary Duff, who came out with the smash hit that can't be found on Spotify, only YouTube, uh, Santa Claus Lane. And it is God. rough on the ears. It is jarring to the senses. Uh, it, don't get me wrong. She, her hits are up there. I will go to bat for Hillary Duff. What I won't go to bed for are her Christmas efforts. I am sorry. This one didn't do it for me. You can go check it out yourself. It's just not not up to par with Christina Aguilera and Destiny's Child. This is where the decade takes an obvious turn. Um, and then 2003, we're in be- a little better hands. Ashanti, Christmas time again. Whitney okay, Houston, sure. One Wish, the holiday album. Talented artist there. Definitely a... Wow. It's kind of... What's interesting about this is there's still old school artists coming out with work and new school artists as well. So to me, that was kind of a weird juxtaposition of Ashanti and Whitney Houston being like, let's see, you know, let's do this. Let's just release and made a, made a better woman win. Okay, 2004. I don't know if one of you two wants to read this because I don't know if I'm just going to read a list while you guys listen. But I, I think I need Zach or Tom, one of you, Rock, Paper, Scissors, it out, to, to, to let the good people of, of Earth know who was responsible from our generation for it. <laughs> taking the reins of the classic duet baby it's cold outside in 2004 man which is a point of discussion all on its own many radio stations are not playing it this year for its uh creepy not even undertones but it's it's a clear overtone <laughs> Maybe we'll come back to that. Do you want to do rock, paper, scissor, Zach? We'll just, we'll yell it out. Rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Okay. Are we going on shoot? Or are we yes, going after, of after shoot? Rock, paper, scissor. And then we say rock, paper, scissor. And then we say what we're throwing. Oh, okay. All right. Got it? Got it. All right. Here we go. I'll go one, two, three, four, rock, paper, scissor. Shoot. Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh my got God. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors paper. Scissor. Oh, what did you say? Okay. I didn't even hear you. It was Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson is who it was. <laughs> the Songbirds. <laughs> Southwestern Ohio's own Nick Lachey and, uh, and his, his bride, Jessica Simpson, put out a performance that my wife this morning over cereal described as very breathy. Um, <laughs> in reference to Simpson's uh, singing her half of the, of the duet. Uh, she didn't have much much praise for Lachey's efforts either. Um, <laughs> a year later, Simpson filed for divorce on December 16, 2005, citing irreconcilable differences. So um, Maybe it was the breathiness. It is possible that any number of reasons for... Uh, yeah, so that says a lot about where the culture was in 2004. They were handed the very important reins of that duet and, uh, you know... You blew it! It's not, not great. Not great, Bob. So people are like, how's the decade stacking up so far? 
Not great. We're not doing real well here. Uh, we definitely dropped the ball on one of the classics there. Uh, some other efforts that year. Bare Naked Ladies came out with a version of God Rest You, mm. Merry Gentlemen, which is, uh, you know. That's a weird one. It It is, and it's, you know, it's good for them, but also not great either. Uh, I'd almost rather <laughs> hear the Hillary Duff song just for because it's more entertaining because of how oddball it is. Uh, Clay Aiken came out with, a, with his album, Mary Did You Know?, uh, was one of the songs oh. he sang after a crushing loss to Ruben Stunnard uh, in, in in one of the seasons, <laughs> early crushing. early early seasons of American Idol, um, a head scratcher oh. to be sure. He uh, he he always <laughs> rubbed me the wrong way. Clay Clay. There were the lyrics to "If I Was Invisible," where he talks about pretty much mm. spying on somebody. Which then I could just watch you in your room. It's it, yeah, I could see that. I could see where someone could take that as a uh, odd. That's clearly <laughs> clearly an overtone as well, in my opinion. There's no undertones in that song. That's that's pretty much saying it straight out. All right, Tom, you want to describe where this train continues to stray further and further from the Lord's light in 2005? <laughs> it's about to straight up fall. These off are the legitimately tracks. the what Google is like. No, this is what happened. <laughs> like this isn't us picking <laughs> the most obscure artists. This is the most recognizable names of each year as we delve further and further into the wreckage. All right, so releasing an absolute stunner in 2005, the Cheetah Girls with a Cheetah-licious Christmas. <laughs> where, where, oh, where have we gone? I can't even begin to comprehend what that would sound like. Link in the show notes. <laughs> I think they could do a mashup of that in Santa Claus Lane by Duff, and it would be hard to tell when the songs were switching back and forth from one another. What gets me about that is that Cheetah Girls is not even, it might be the most normal perf- like Christmas performance of that year, because we had Michael McDonald <laughs> singing on his smash hit album, Through the Many Winters, a song titled Christmas on the Bayou. <laughs> 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 so you got Michael McDonald singing, tr- like singing like he's trying not to breathe. With I would argue <laughs> might be is how he sounds. Also trying to like lay on a little Cajun <laughs> like on top of that <laughs> swamp rock kidney stone. <laughs> yeah, he's swamp rock and uh, Saint Nick, and it is. Um, it's like you're stuck in the bayou itself. He brings you right there with them <laughs> through the many winters. <laughs> <laughs> and then Zach, uh, who who was the third that year to to, to to lay down some 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 riffs on us in a Christmassy way? Well, Smash Mouth graced mm. us with the gift of rock, which we can all appreciate. Some rocks fit in our stockings. Some stockings get rocking. And thank you, Smash <laughs> Mouth, <laughs> for that. <laughs> rocking your stockings <laughs> since two thousand five. <laughs> I would say. When 2004, when I read the Jessica Simpson, Nick Lachey, Clay Aiken, Bare Naked Ladies, I'm like, there's no way it gets weirder and worse, right? <laughs> One calendar year later, the Cheetah Girls, Michael McDonald, and Smash Mouth are like, hold my freaking beer. And then 2006 hits, which is the most, you know, on the soundtrack for Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, that one mm. song, and this is what it's like when worlds collide. Yeah. Well, this is what it's like when worlds collide. I'm going to read a list of bands (laughs) that released holiday efforts in 2006. And you would have wished you were still living in the wonderful uh, 2002 world where Destiny Child had us (laughs) taken care of on lock. uh, Christina Aguilera a year prior. Um, But yes, I'll just start it right at the top. Sarah McLachlan, she's peaking enough to come out with a winter album. This is probably pre-dog commercials. James Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) I got love, mad love for James Taylor, but the fact that he's on this list just is jarring to the senses, to be sure. Sufjan Steven, Stevens comes out with a holiday effort. Bette Midler is around and producing music in 2006. Uh, Hall & Oates, <laughs> this is like the last gasping breath. I think a lot of these artists were like, yeah, I'll come out with a Christmas effort. And then they saw what was happening. They were like, this is it. This is the last time anyone you would hear on classic rock radio is ever going to come out with music <laughs> ever again. Uh, Amy Mann. Came out with some Christmas efforts that year. Allie and AJ. I think my brother had an Allie and AJ electric toothbrush when he was younger. Or it might have been mine. It was mine. Uh, Twisted <laughs> Sister came out with a Twisted Christmas that year. <laughs> and perhaps my favorite, Cole, uh, <laughs> Afro Man released the holiday classic, uh, Deck My Balls on a Colt 45 <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> 
This is all real. Again, this isn't, there was no effort made to only pick the most obscure re releases. Th those, th these are just, you know, James Taylor. James Taylor's was good. Who, you, mad love for James Taylor, but uh, uh, definitely a lot of, I don't know. You guys have any, <laughs> are you guys all right? I just, should we do a status check on all of us? Are we all health, <laughs> breathing and healthy and okay after? I, I know I've just, I've never heard any of these songs. I've never yeah. heard any of these Christmas songs. Right. You have to own it, right? To really make, steal the song from dudes like Andy Williams and Bing Crosby. Like there's no, you don't just roll in and get to have it. But yet, as we see every year, every act, if hot enough, gets an opportunity to do so. I remember the Sufjan on Stevens album. Hannah listened to that a bunch and um, it's, you know, boring as I find most of his music, but it's like unique enough. Like it's him enough to where it's like almost seems like it makes sense. 2007 were saved by the likes of none other than f good friend of the show, Taylor Swift. <laughs> 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 she uh, came out with her Christmas album. Uh, Last Christmas was perhaps the most popular off that. And then Josh Groban, the one and only, mm. uh, graced us with Noel. Uh, Angels We Have Heard on High changed my life it didn't but josh groban is a funny guy and he's uh he is he's a pretty good singer right he's pretty he's good a pretty good, singer. pretty good singer i will say that last christmas is one of the weakest swift vocal performances i've ever heard it just sounds like she's very tired mm. not breathy but just super super tired could you say that it was before she found her voice because red had not dropped yet hmm yeah, that might be because her. Hmm. I mean, if you're yeah. big enough to have a Christmas album, you're already big. But I mean, like everything since Red has been on a different, like galactic plane, like twice as many semis at the show. Yeah, <laughs> like she's bringing... still growing up. I mean, well, how old is she at in 2007? She was 17, 18 years old, right? Yeah, something like that. I think she's around our age. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So probably not fully vocally developed yet. Or just really, really tired. 2007 makes a lot more sense. It makes you feel a lot better because people that we grew up having to hear or be around or associate with generationally. Groban, Angels We Have Heard on High, excellent song choice for him to kill. If there was a Christmas song that Taylor Swift was going to like both be on brand and do pretty all right with, it would have been last Christmas, right? Sure. I just think song choice wise, 2007 really... Not that we're competing with any other decade at all. I'm not, that's not my argument. I would say if there's one year I would even remotely defend, it would be 2007. Because it was also the year Reliant K came out with their album, oh, which I think all- Let it snow, it, baby, let it rain, dear. You know, let's do this right now. Is okay. pop punk even a genre that should attempt to make Christmas music? Because even though Reliant K's could be arguably a good effort version of it, I still think it's all trash. You know, like, I don't want you slapping snares through my freaking hot cocoa breaks with my family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't be eating pumpkin rolls, like trying to like, like, yeah, let's, you know, let's do the distortion. Like, that's not my thought process. <laughs> during the no, yeah. Hit the pedal. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get it going. I, I love their version of angels. We have heard on high, but like the 12 days of Christmas, I mean, not a good song to begin with. Can we start there? Just exhausting with how much energy they put in. Oh, my God. It's the just, only bleh. effort uh, for 12 days that I've really loved was John Denver and the Muppets, which my Aunt Colleen used to play. She had that CD. <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite Christmas albums. Yeah, hands down, some of the best work I've ever listened to by the Muppets. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> they really pulled themselves up by their straps. They were built for that song. They were built for the song. <laughs> But yeah, I, I just, I don't think like when the labels are like, they're hot, like how hot? Christmas album hot? I don't know. What's the genre? Because if it's pop punk, don't do that. Why would you think yeah. that's a good Okay. So My Chemical Romance. Do they did, have one? The, we performed it at the Rudy's. It was- um, Oh, they did. They covered- the, All I the, Want for yeah. Christmas is You. Basically, they took Mariah Carey's version and put guitars to the chords, right? Yeah, I mean, I really like the halftime thing they did after, like, the second chorus, like, into the bridge, I guess. <sighs> I mean, I, I I like that there's this effort to be inclusive of people who listen to the genre, but I think most of them just kind of fall flat. And it's like, most of the genre is sad and depressing and whiny, and it's, you know, the 
girl left me and my hometown sucks. And then all of a sudden they're like singing about like jolly times with Christmas. Like for the whole genre, it just seems off brand, which I think is to me what the most off putting thing is. But there's times that I can like get into it, but like very specific songs, like the two I like on Reliant K's album, I think. Should um, we or, ask the good people to tweet at us with their favorite pop punk Christmas songs? Yeah. And bring us some figgy pudding. Mm. Piggy pudding? That's one from the John Denver one. <laughs> <laughs> no, figgy pudding. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess are there are there good pop punk Christmas songs? I don't know. I Yeah, it's just to me, the Christmas songs feel heavier than what pop punk usually provides. I don't know. I'm not mad that it's there, but I just don't Ooh, okay. particularly partake. Yes. Which I would say that's the nail in the coffin there. If if you would not have one that you truly enjoy, then I'm not sure there's I'm not sure they're out there. I'm not sure that person exists. I'm also just not like a huge Christmas music guy, you know? Ooh. So maybe I Here I'm, we go. Here we go. I don't know. How does that make you feel? Yeah, but with hits like Deck My Balls, I mean, how can <laughs> you be turned away so easily? Actually, that brings us to 2008. 2008's like, okay, 2007, I know you tried to save us, but I don't know if we're ready to be saved. Uh, <laughs> Faith Hill comes out with Joy to the World, Faith Hill, in good sure. hands, like voice yep. for Christmas music for sure. Uh, <laughs> and then there was Christmas with Weezer. I maintain, <laughs> and I am a Weezer apologist until the day I die. It's the only thing I care about in this world other than my wife and my family. I care about a lot, but Weezer's one of them. Um, <laughs> it's not great, Bob. Not great at all. Uh, Snoop Dogg <laughs> came out with a Pimp's Christmas song. <laughs> This is a quote. This is a lyric. Or this is the talky part before he begins rapping. Rolling up them trees, it's a pimp's Christmas. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> you know exactly what that song is, and it's all right. Um, this is a song that my sister always got stuck in her head, even though she could never name who it was. So I looked at the lyrics, and this is just for her, really. In 2008, <laughs> there was a band called The Hollywood Undead. Did you, have you, heard, did you hear of them? Yeah, yeah. They came out with Christmas in Hollywood. Here's a lyric from that. Uh, again, 2008, straying from the Lord's light. Uh, <laughs> it's Christmas in Hollywood. Santa's back up in the hood. Let's meet under the mistletoe and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas in Hollywood. Yeah, it's not. It's, uh, oh, God. Okay, and here's here's where the decade is just mocking <sighs> us. In 2009, there were two notable names. <laughs> here's the two names. Bob Dylan. <laughs> and David Archuleta. <laughs> Man, bleak. Super bleak. And then let's just finish this off. In 2010, would you believe me if I told you that we've gone full circle enough for Jessica Simpson to have come out with another great <laughs> <laughs> Because that's exactly how that shit went down. And then uh, Mariah Carey came out with Merry Christmas to you, the two being the Roman numerals two for two. Uh, uh, Susan okay, Boyle okay. of, okay. of yeah. British reality show fame uh, had some stuff. And then we've come so far into it here that by 2010, we were seeing albums such as The Music of Glee, colon, the Christmas <laughs> album. So, sure. Yeah. So sure. We're, we're, that's, where, that's where the decade takes us. Uh, a far cry from Destiny's Child uh, in their, in their heyday. <laughs> taking good care of us. We really didn't stand a chance. No, we didn't. No, thank you. Actually, expand on that, Zach. I don't think we honestly did if you just look, read <laughs> this list of musical acts. <laughs> 1901 to 1953. I mean, nailed, right? <laughs> sure. Slapped. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that half a century low-key slapped. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like I said, like 1100 BC is still mm. my my time period to go. But I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what happened. But we we didn't we didn't choose this. This is this just has just how it happened. Would you say um, the pimp's Christmas chose us? <laughs> Ooh, I would have to say that. Okay, if we should make a bracket. But instead of that, I'm just gonna make you two pick between Tom. I'm gonna have one for you, and Zach. I'm gonna have one for you, Tom. <sighs> Desert Island question. You only get one Christmas song every year on the Desert Island. It's on a little 45 that you play on your record player. I don't know if that's the right way to phrase what I'm trying to portray. <laughs> you only get to either hear A, A Pimp's Christmas, 
or B, Christmas on the Bayou by Michael B. Donald uh, through the many winters. <laughs> um, I, I honestly haven't heard either of them, but I might just go with a Pimp's Christmas. Yeah, I think that's the right choice. Well, I, I was that's... going to go with Christmas on the Bayou because I'm just... <laughs> I need everyone who is hearing this, honestly, you need to go to YouTube and listen to that song and then tweet at us. Just <laughs> experience this with us, please. For the love of God, listen to Michael McDonald. Oh. Also try to sing with a, with a Cajun accent. <laughs> and it's about Christmas. Oh, God. Anyway, okay. Zach, this one's for you. <clears throat> oh, I lost you. Okay. A. Desert Island, okay. Sarah McLaughlin, Winter Song, or that classic rendition of Baby It's Cold Outside <laughs> by Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey. Uh, two squared is four. <laughs> Math is definitely going to help you here. <laughs> How many licks does it take? <laughs> um, you know, it'll pro- it, it needs to be... Sarah McLaughlin winter song Ooh. because because <laughs> because I don't want any undertones being mistakenly <laughs> overtones on my fucking island okay all right Pat you get as long as on your can I make a request island. first oh god okay. please make sure none of my options are the David Archuleta one <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, don't, I no disrespect to David Archuleta or Rachel Ray for that for that matter, okay. because we are a pro Rachel Ray podcast. If yeah. there's nothing anybody gets from these shows, it's that she's very underrated and she's a freaking national treasure. I want to make stickers that say "Reminiscent approves Rachel Ray." <laughs> we have to come up with the right wording, but Look like campaign big fan. stickers, unironically. <laughs> Unironically, right. actually purchasing her dog food on the rig. Just like, have used several of her recipes in my lifetime. Just like a picture of her face with a big thumbs up that says Just approved like, by. What, <laughs> what's the hate? You know, like, who, you, you really got to be looking for trouble if you're trying to hate on Rachel Ray. She's our girl for sure. So um, anyway, yeah. All right. Sorry. So your choices, Pat, yeah. are mm. Mary Did You Know by Clay Aiken. Okay. Or A Cheetalicious Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> dude, don't disrespect Mr. Aiken like that. It's got to be Clay. I got to go with Clay. Yeah. The dude brought it is. home and he got hosed. Ruben stuttered. Don't get me wrong. In the zone he sings in, killed it. Absolutely killed it. But what the f*** has he done since? Not a well, damn thing. I think, you know, the it's, you know, look, ball don't lie, right? As they say, as they say. No, no disrespect, but Clay can have some serious pipes. Um and I just, you know, you know, am I allowed to say this? Am I allowed to say that a cheat delicious Christmas didn't quite do it for me? Can I go out on that limb and admit <laughs> That's a fair that assessment. I wasn't sure. as in the spirit as I'd like to be when listening to that particular tune? We could all agree, I think. Yeah. I can't wait to make the Apple Music playlist of every one of these <laughs> songs. <laughs> That's what they would play in solitary confinement to like <laughs> try to draw confessions out of people. <laughs> or just like somebody at if somebody in retail really screws up and the team leader has to like punish the group, then they would turn this playlist on during Christmas time while they're trying to sell shoes. Dang. Yeah, that was the my least favorite part of working um retail during Christmas <sighs> in uh college was uh the the very few songs they would put on the Christmas CD that they played throughout the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, should we take a moment to relax before we close this one out? I think it's probably best. I think it's probably best. We haven't relaxed with Zach yet. Let's take him back to a little fallback Friday and let him... Yeah, let's... Invite him to one of our past Christmas episodes. I'd like to start this week by sitting in my living room at home during the holidays and it's snowing and the lights have just been hung on a fresh Fraser fir tree and there's a smell and uh, fresh cookies baking in the kitchen and I, and I just begin to close my eyes. Uh, as you close your eyes you hear the Netflix special of the crackling fireplace loop playing in the background and you just keep thinking there's no place like home for the holidays. 
Mm. And then as I take a sip of my cocoa, it burns my tongue a little bit, but I've never not done that, so that feels normal and good and tradition-like. And I take a second sip, and I take a deep breath, and I reach my arms and legs out as far as they'll go, and I just laugh and laugh. But as you reach your arms out, you forget so quickly that you were just holding a cup of piping hot cocoa, and you just spill it like all over yourself, and uh, it burns. You think maybe second degree. You think, uh, man, that's a really efficient microwave. Why did I put it in so long? Uh, it, all you know is that it, it hurts real bad. And as the cocoa majestically spills like a waterfall in Yosemite National Park, down your couch and over your walls and <laughs> through the woods to grandmother's house, if you will. <laughs> it gently spills ever so majestically into the power socket in which you've plugged all of your exterior Christmas tree and interior lights into this holiday season. And as the liquid drips in, it creates this sense of holiday warmth in the form of numerous sparks as electricity in the form of sparks and magic of the holiday season begins to fly across your living room. Meanwhile, your eyes are closed, trying to embrace the warmth and sanctity of being centered. So, you sit there, eyes closed, arms burning. You think, man, this uh, Netflix special fireplace crackling has gotten pretty pretty loud, and man, it, it feels realistic this year. It is so hot in here. I feel like I'm actually sitting in front of a wood-burning fireplace and you just wonder, damn, it's hot in here. What, What is going on? And as you open your eyes, you realize the fire has reached the tree itself and that thing goes up like a motherfucking tinderbox. And at this point, you begin to realize it's too late. And you look up to the sky and you curse your lord and you look down and you curse your Satan, I guess. And uh, <laughs> you begin to become one with the fact that you are going to die this holiday season. And you focus on becoming centered and okay with the notion of sweet release. And you have one last sip of cocoa in your cup, and somehow that becomes meaningful to you as the frame, as the flames spread uh, ever so quickly, exponentially quick, and your house is crumbling around you. And as the firefighters make it to your house, two minutes too late, all they see is a pile of embers, a pile of burnt Christmas trees, Christmas presents, and they wonder if only he hadn't stretched so hard in an attempt to become so centered, none of this would have happened. What an awful holiday experience. Until, of course, they stumble upon totally untouched your collection of action figures from over the decades and they give them to kids in need and they have a lot of fun with them and it's a happy holiday for many others it's kind of like that whole train would you kill one or a group if you had control of the lever thing anyway happy holidays everybody well there you go now that we're all feeling nice and relaxed we can go along with our day uh check out this awesome playlist on Apple Music and Spotify. And uh, let's give our song of the week. So- songs of the week. Let's give our songs of the week before we say goodbye. John, John, John. I'll do it real quick. Give me Heat Wave by Snail Mail off Lush. Big fan. Walk Like an Egyptian, The Bengals, 1986. Interesting. I was just watching Gilmore Girls for the third time, the whole series. And uh, in this past episode, they all went to a Bengals concert. So hmm. uh, a little fun fact. Um, I got nothing Christmassy and going to recommend Turnover again. I've really been enjoying their song Butterfly Dream off of their latest album called Good Nature. Just a really mellow song. Fun little noodly guitar parts. I think uh, what do we have coming up next? Some 41. We're going to do it. Yeah, Queen Amanda has requested uh, several episodes as we were struggling to find one for this week, and we owe her quite a oh, few. Oh, uh, JW so. requested Found Zawain as well. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, Very so cool. we, got, we got a list going, which is good. Keep them coming. You can find us on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. And uh, yeah, hit us up, let us know. 
and we hope you had some fun because we certainly did. All right. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you. Deck my balls. <laughs> All right, everybody, I hope you're ready to go into the holidays feeling nice and relaxed and centered. Feel free to try to write the funniest review you can on Apple Podcasts. Uh, If you want, you can send me your address. I'll send you something. I can't promise it'll be any good, but I'll get you something. And if you have any ideas for upcoming shows, tweet at us at underscore reminiscent FM. All right, everybody, deck my balls. Love you. Love you.